Astronomy to GCSE, Topic 2.4, Exoplanets. So 1. How to detect exoplanets. Astromerty is a detection method that looks at the wobble of a star caused by the force of gravity due to the mass of an exoplanet. Remember that the exoplanet will not orbit the star. Both the exoplanet and star will orbit around the centre of mass of the whole system. Usually as the star is so much heavier than the planet, the centre of, of mass is in fact inside the star, so the apparent wobble is very small. In the animation I've made it much larger than it really is. Transit observations. We can sometimes observe the transit of the exoplanet as it moves between us and the star. This method does rely on us seeing the system on the side rather than above. If an exoplanet moves across the disk of the star, then the brightness of the star diminishes, as shown by the animation and graph below. The radial velocity method uses Doppler shifts to measure the wobbling of the star caused by the exoplanet. When the star is moving away from the observer, the light from the star becomes slightly shifted to the red end of the spectrum. Likewise, when the star is moving towards the observer, as it wobbles, the light becomes slightly shifted towards the blue end of the spectrum. This red to blue shift occurs with a regular pattern due to the orbit of the exoplanet. Doppler shift is covered in GCSE physics and also in astronomy to GCSE 4.3. 2. The difficulties with detecting individual planets. Using these methods, it is much easier to detect large exoplanets orbiting close to their star. This is because the effect of the planet on its parent star is minimal, so as larger exoplanets have a larger effect, it is easier to detect them. This is why many of the detected exoplanets have so been called hot Jupiters, as they are large and orbit relatively close to their star, hence making them hot. Our current methods limit our discovery of small rocky exoplanets, as their effect on the movement and brightness of their parent star is often too small to detect. If you fancy having a look at some of the discovered exoplanets, then I would recommend downloading NASA's EYES, which is a program that lets you observe exoplanets. 3. Life and liquid water. Life as we know it all requires water. In fact, all living organisms on Earth are carbon-based. That is why carbon is one of the most abundant elements in our body. And it is essential for many of the vital organic chemicals that we rely on. It is possible that somewhere in the universe that is life that does not require water. However, for life as we know it, water is an essential requirement. 4. Origin of water on Earth. There are two main ideas of how Earth became covered in such a large quantity of water. First, it is possible that asteroids and comets which collided with Earth delivered the water. Second, the second idea is that the chemical reactions early on in the history of Earth created water from hydrogen and oxygen. It is quite possible that a combination of both, method, both methods gave Earth its water. So how do astronomers attempt to determine the origin of water on Earth? Well, astronomers are able to measure the ratio of hydrogen to deuterium in water. Hydrogen 1 has a single proton in its nucleus. However, deuterium, also called heavy hydrogen or hydrogen 2, is an isotope of hydrogen which has one proton and one neutron in its nucleus. In normal water, some of the hydrogen is in fact deuterium. By measuring the ratio of hydrogen 1 to deuterium in the water of comets and asteroids, astronomers can then compare this ratio to that on Earth to see if they are similar. If they are similar, it is likely that our water originated in comets and asteroids. However, they are not, this theory is unlikely. The method of comparing the ratio of isotopes was used in the 2014 Rosetta mission by ESA, the European Space Agency. 5. The habitable zone, also known as the Goldilocks zone. As we know, water is probably essential for life, at least for us it is. In fact, more specifically, the water has to be liquid. 
The habitable zone is an area around the star where if an exoplanet exists, the water will be liquid. This diagram shows how as the mass of the star increases, and hence the energy given off by it also increases, so does the distance from the star to the habitable zone. If you get a question on it, remember that the habitable zone is an area around a star where the temperature allows liquid water to exist. 6. The Drake Equation The Drake Equation is an equation made by Frank Drake to estimate the number of extraterrestrial civilizations within the Milky Way that could communicate with us. The equation is as follows n, or the number of civilizations in our galaxy with which communication could be possible, is equal to the number of stars in our galaxy, times the fraction of stars with planetary systems, times the average number of planets that can sustain life, times the fraction of planets that actually go on to develop life, times the fraction of life forms that are intelligent, times the fraction of these that can communicate deep into space times the length of time these civilizations release this detectable signal for. So if you know what all of these fractions are and times them together, you get the number of civilizations in our galaxy which, with which communication could be possible. Many of the later um, fractions are only estimates currently so there is no actual number for the Drake equation. 7. How do astronomers search for evidence for life elsewhere in our solar system? There are a variety of methods that astronomers use to search for life in our solar system. The first is using space probes. Examples include Viking, a NASA space probe that went to Mars, and Huygens, an ESA space probe that went to Titan, one of Saturn's moons. The second method is spectral analysis of planetary atmospheres. This allows astronomers to search for gases that are produced by living organisms like oxygen and methane. Finally, analysis of radio waves from space is an attempt to detect signals given out by intelligent life forms. 8. And what if we do discover extraterrestrial life? There are both benefits and possible dangers of discovering extraterrestrial life. For example, is it a good idea to transfer organisms from one environment to another? Life on planet Earth might become extinct in another environment. Equally, so might extraterrestrial life on planet Earth. Maybe the extraterrestrial life will flourish on planet Earth. The extraterrestrial life might be really friendly and want to communicate and work with us. However, they may want to destroy life on Earth and use our resources. The extraterrestrial life may also bring an unstoppable disease to our planet, or they can bring technology and cures to many health problems. That's the end of Astronomy to GCSE Topic 2.4. Thank you very much for listening and watching.